Ghosts of Glamis Castle, Scotland Glamis Castle is located in Angus, Scotland, and is one of the oldest inhabited castles in Scotland, with roots dating back to the 14th century. Its construction began in the 14th century, and it has undergone numerous renovations and additions over the centuries. It features elements of medieval, Jacobian, Victorian and Gothic architecture. Glamis Castle has strong connections to the British royal family. Queen Elizabeth I, the wife of King George VI, and mother of Queen Elizabeth II, spent her childhood at Glamis. Princess Margaret, the sister of Queen Elizabeth II, was also born at Glamis Castle. Today, Glamis Castle is open to the public, offering guided tours that provide insights into its history, architecture and legendary tales. The castle's impressive grounds, gardens and surrounding parkland also attract visitors. A sculpture of Queen Elizabeth I by renowned artist Anglia Connor stands in the gardens of Glamis Castle. The Queen Mother's love for Glamis is evident in her extensive contributions to its preservation and restoration. Glamis Castle is currently owned by Simon Bowes Lyon, the 19th Earl of Strathmore and Kinghorn. The Bowes Lyon family has held the title since the 17th century. Glamis Castle stands as a symbol of Scotland's past, blending history, legend and architectural beauty in a way that continues to fascinate visitors from around the world. Story 1 the Grey Lady. In the heart of Scotland, in the 16th century, a woman named Janet Douglas, the Lady of Glamis, lived a life of grace and privilege. Born into a noble family, she grew up amidst the lush landscapes and towering stone walls of Glamis Castle. Janet was a woman of intelligence and beauty, known for her kindness and gentle spirit. As the daughter of the Earl of Angus, Janet's life was intertwined with the complicated stresses of Scottish politics. At a young age, she was betrothed to John Lyon, the sixth Lord of Glamis. Their union was not only a joining of two noble families, but also a strategic alliance that aimed to strengthen their political influence. Marriage, however, did not shield Janet from the difficult events of that time. In the early 19th century, Scotland was marked by political instability and religious upheaval. The shadow of the English crown loomed large, casting a pall over the Scottish aristocracy. The winds of change swept through the land, and as the wife of the Lord of Glamis, Janet found herself caught in the storm. In 1528, tragedy struck when Lord Glamis passed away unexpectedly. There were rumours that Janet had poisoned him, but there was no hard and fast evidence to back this theory up. Now a widow, Janet faced the challenges of managing Glamis Castle and ensuring the welfare of her children. As the political landscape grew more treacherous, she navigated the complexities of alliances and allegiances with grace and resilience. However, Janet's life took a faithful turn when her second husband, Archbold Campbell, the fourth Earl of Argyll, fell out of favour with King James V, 
accusations of treason and conspiracy were leveled against Earl, were leveled against the Earl and Lady Janet. In a climate of suspicion and fear, political complications unfolded, leading to Janet's arrest in 1537. Charged with conspiring to poison King James V and practicing witchcraft, Lady Janet Douglas faced a trial that would seal her fate. The accusations were based on flimsy evidence and Janet violently denied any wrongdoing. Yet, in the politically charged atmosphere of the time, justice was often elusive. On the 17th of July, 1537, Janet Douglas, Lady Glamis, met a tragic end. She was condemned to be burnt at the stake as a witch. The flames that consumed her were fueled not only by the hands of religious paranoia, but also by the secret plans of her political rivals. As the smoke rose from the pyre, Glamis Castle stood as a silent witness to the injustice that had befallen its lady. The echoes of Janet's last screams and cries for help as her body burnt alive lingered within its stone walls, and her memory became intertwined with the haunted legacy of the castle. To this day, the story of Janet Douglas, Lady Glamis, serves as a reminder of the eventful history that unfolded within the walls of the Scottish castles during an era marked by political intrigue and religious strife. Her spirit, forever bound to the pages of history, continues to echo in the corridors of Glamis Castle, a testament to the enduring power of a woman whose life was cut short by the shadows of betrayal and political machination. As the moon cast its silvery glow over the ancient stone walls of Glamis Castle, the air hung heavy with the weight of centuries-old secrets. Within the dark and musty chambers and shadowy corridors, the ghostly presence of Lady Janet Douglas, now known as the Grey Lady, roamed. Her spirit forever bound to the castle she once called home. The Clock Tower Room, a place of both elegance and peace, bore the mark of Lady Janet's sorrow. It was here that she found peace during her most trying times, a sanctuary hidden away from prying eyes. Now, as the Grey Lady, her ghostly figure could often be seen in the quiet hours of the night. Her ethereal form draped in mist as she moved through the room with an air of quiet despair. Glamis Castle's ancient halls echoed with the sound of spectral footsteps. The Grey Lady's presence was felt in the eerie draughts that whispered through hidden passengers, as if the very stones retained the memory of her once mournful footsteps. Those who ventured into the castle reported encountering a chilling breeze, a spectral caress that left an unsettling sense of being watched. The chapel, a sacred space steeped in history and tragedy, was a focal point of the Grey Lady's hauntings. Some claimed to hear the faint echoes of a woman weeping or the soft murmurs of a sorrowful lament. Candles flickered in response to her unseen presence. Glamis Castle's hidden chambers, once the refuge of Lady Janet's clandestine activities, were fraught with an otherworldly energy. Guests reported an oppressive atmosphere, as if an unseen force lingered in the hidden nooks and crannies, 
guarding the castle's long buried secrets. The Grey Lady's ghostly figure was said to manifest, veiled in mist in these secret spaces, a silent witness to the passage of time. One of the most haunted areas was the Queen's Room, where the Grey Lady's spirit was believed to linger with particular intensity. Guests recounted walking in the dead of the night to the sensation of a cold presence in the room, and some reported seeing a misty figure standing at the foot of their bed, an apparition with tearful eyes that held the weight of centuries. The courtyard, surrounded by ancient walls and towering turrets, bore witness to the Grey Lady's restless spirit wandering beneath the moonlit sky. Some claimed to hear the echoes of a woman's voice carried by the night breeze, her words indistinct but carrying an immiscible air of sadness. Glamis Castle, with its rich history, stood as a stage for the Grey Lady's spectral performances. Her hauntings, a testament to the enduring power of a woman wronged, continued to captivate those who dared to enter the castle's enigmatic embrace. The Grey Lady's spirit, forever tied to Glamis Castle, whispered through its hallowed halls an eternal presence in the realm between the living and the departed. Story 2 Earl Birdie Alexander Lindsay, also known as Earl Birdie, was a historic figure associated with Glamis Castle. The details about his life and death are somewhat shrouded in legend and mystery. Alexander Lindsay held the title of Earl of Crawford. The nickname, Earl Birdie, is delivered from his prominent and thick beard. Earl Birdie was reputed to be a man of volatile and intemperate character. Legends depict him as a reckless and wild individual, known for his love of gambling and his extravagant lifestyle. One of the most famous stories about Earl Birdie revolves around a faithful night of gambling at Glamis Castle. According to the legend, Earl Birdie engaged in a particularly intense and prolonged game of cards in the castle. As the night wore on, his behaviour became increasingly erratic. The infamous incident occurred on a Sunday, which was considered the Sabbath, a day of rest and religious observance. Gambling on the Sabbath was deemed highly inappropriate and Earl Birdie's refusal to cease his activity led to a confrontation with divine consequences. In the midst of the gambling session, it is said that Earl Birdie declared he would play cards with the devil himself. According to the legend, a mysterious stranger eventually appeared to join the game, and Earl Birdie played on, seemingly making a pact with the supernatural forces. The legend takes a dark turn, claiming that the mysterious stranger eventually revealed himself as the devil and, after Earl Birdie's death, took his soul. Some versions of the legend 
suggest that Earl Birdie's body was never found after that night, adding an air of mystery to his ultimate fate. The exact details of Earl Birdie's death remain uncertain. While the legend suggests a supernatural end to his life, historical records and documented evidence regarding his death are scarce. In the shadowy corridors of Glamis Castle, where history and legend intertwine, the spirit of Alexander Lindsay, known as Earl Birdie, lingered beyond the threshold of mortal life. It was said that after that faithful night of gambling and the alleged pact with the devil, Earl Birdie's restless soul became forever bound to the stone walls of Glamis. The Grey Lady, Janet Douglas, was not the sole apparition to grace the ancient halls of the castle. Earl Birdie's spectral presence was felt in the very rooms where he once reveled in the excesses of life. The Clock Tower Room, where Lady Janet sought refuge in times of sorrow, became a focal point of Earl Birdie's hauntings. Visitors reported an eerie sensation as if the air itself remembered the intensity of that ill-fated game of cards. The grand halls, once filled with the echoes of Earl Birdie's laughter and the clinking of goblets, now resonated with a haunting silence. Some claimed to hear phantom footsteps, as if a restless spirit continued to pace the floors in eternal contemplation of the choices made on that cursed Sabbath night. The Queen's Room, where guests often reported encounters with the Grey Lady, became a nexus of supernatural energy. Those who spent the night in this chamber spoke of inexplainable cold draughts and an unsettling presence. Whispers echoed through the air carrying with them the ghostly remains of Earl Birdie's ill-fated game with the devil. The chapel, a place of sacred worship, bore witness to Earl Birdie's eternal penance. Visitors reported hearing spectral chants, as if a tormented soul sought solace in the embrace of forgotten prayers. Candles flickered in response to unseen forces, casting an ethereal glow on the pews that once bore witness to the recklessness of mortal arrogance. As the moon cast its pale light upon the castle's courtyard, some claimed to see a shadowy figure resembling Earl Birdie himself. A spectral silhouette, his beard flowing in the phantom breeze, wandering beneath the ancient stone arches. Those who dared to approach spoke of a chilling presence, an unseen gaze that seemed to pierce the veil between the living and the departed. The tales of Earl Birdie's hauntings spread through generations, each visitor adding a new layer of report to the paranormal sightings of Glamis Castle. Some reported feeling a sudden drop in temperature, a cold touch on their shoulders, or hearing faint whispers in the dead of the night. The legend persisted, transcending the boundaries of fact and fiction. Earl Birdie, the once flamboyant and reckless noble, became a ghostly guardian of Glamis Castle, forever bound to the echoes of that night when the cards were dealt and a pact was made with forces beyond the mortal realm. Visitors, who tread the hallowed halls of Glamis, continue to seek glimpses of the agnomatic Earl Birdie, adding to the castle's reputation as a place where the line between the living and the dead blurs, and where the past 
is ever present in the flickering candlelight. Story 3 The Ogerville Clan The conflict between the Ogoville and Lindsay clans in 1486 was part of the broader struggles for power and influence that characterised the turbulent history of medieval Scotland. The feuds between these two clans was fuelled by a complex web of political, territorial and familial rivalries. In the late 15th century, Scotland was marked by a series of clan conflicts with different noble families vying for control and dominance in various regions. The Ogerville and Lindsay clans found themselves entangled in one such feud, each seeking to assert its authority and secure its interests. The details of the specific events leading to the conflict in 1489 may be elusive, but it's likely that disputes over land resources and political power played a significant role. Clashes between the rival clans were not uncommon during this period, and the ogival lindsay feud was just one manifestation of the broader struggles for supremacy. Now, rumour has it that during the conflict, the Ogerville clan went to Glamis Castle to seek sanctuary from the pursuing Lindsay clan, it was said that Lord Glamis welcomed them in and then showed them the secret chamber so that they could hide from the Lindsay clan. But unknown to the Ogerville clan was the fact that Lord Glamis had a friendship with the Lindsays. So, once the Ogervilles were in the secret chamber, Lord Glamis locked them in and left them there to starve to death. It wasn't till many years later that strange noises were heard coming from behind a walled area, and on inspection, a room was found behind with all the skeletons of the Ogerville clan. To this day, visitors and castle staff have reported a very close and dense atmosphere in the room, and strange sounds coming from within. One can only imagine how terrible it must have been for those Ogerville clan members to be locked in that room to die slowly over many days with no means of escape. So, it is hardly surprising that left behind in the castle is the tormented souls of the men who died in that hidden chamber. Story 4 Ghost of the Woman with No Tongue The haunting of the woman with no tongue at Glamis Castle is one of the many mysterious and chilling tales associated with this historic Scottish fortress. The ghostly woman is said to be a former resident or visitor to Glamis Castle who met a tragic and gruesome fate. According to the legend, her tongue was removed as a punishment for some unknown transgression. Some say she overheard some secret and was found out. However, the reason behind this punishment remains shrouded in mystery and speculation, adding to the eerie aura surrounding her spirit. The apparition of the woman with no tongue is often reported in different areas of the Glamis Castle. One of the most commonly cited locations is the so-called Monster Room or Bloody Chamber. 
This room is said to be the site of various disturbing events throughout history, and the woman with no tongue is believed to manifest her presence in this haunted chamber. Witnesses have described encountering the ghostly figure in a state of distress, attempting to communicate without a tongue. Some accounts speak of muffled cries or ghostly whispers emanating from the haunted chambers. Others claim to have seen her apparition wandering the corridors of Glamis Castle, her silent scream forever frozen on her spectral visage, and others have seen her looking out from one of the barred windows of the castle, as well as walking through the park area and pointing to her disfigured face. But to this day, the identity of this poor woman remains a mystery. During the 15th century, punishments for crimes were often severe, and various forms of corporal punishment, including mutilation, were employed. While the loss of a tongue as a specific form of punishment may not have been widespread, there were instances where such a penalty was enacted for particular offences. In deeply religious societies, individuals who were accused of blasphemy or hearsay would face severe consequences, including the loss of their tongues. Speaking against established religious beliefs could be deemed a serious offence, warranting extreme punishment. Those accused of treason or sedation against the ruling authority could face harsh penalties, including mutilation. The loss of the tongue was sometimes considered a way to prevent individuals from spreading dissented ideas or rallying support against the government. In legal contexts, punishment for lying or perjury could be severe. Cutting out the tongue was often seen as a way to prevent individuals from spreading false information or giving false testimony. After hours of research and multiple paranormal investigations, the mystery of the lady with no tongue of Glamis Castle still remains shrouded in secrecy and mystery, as if the true reasons behind this tale were hidden away buried out of sight from the public view. Story 5. The Monster of Glamis In the 19th century, Glamis Castle was believed to conceal a hidden secret. The existence of a deformed and monstrous heir within the Bowes Leon family, the then owners of the castle. This heir was known as the Monster of Glamis and was said to be hideously disfigured and mentally impaired. Rumour was that the boy was named Thomas Boiled Lion. It was said that he was born with deformities and died on the day of his birth, but the lack of a tombstone for the poor child added to the speculation. It was said that he did survive and was put into a room in the castle. The family went to great lengths to keep the existence of the monster a closely guarded secret. Some versions of the story suggest that their heir was confined to a hidden chamber within the castle, with a small window allowing him to observe the world outside. The exact nature of the monster's deformities and the circumstances surrounding his life remain uncertain. The legend also suggests that the monster of Glamis lived for an extended period, hidden away from the public eye 
and his very existence was a source of shame and fear for the Baal's Leon family. The story goes that he was only allowed out his room at night when he would be allowed to walk the roof, parapets and the castle grounds under the cover of darkness. After the death of the monster, Glamis Castle became associated with supernatural occurrences. It is said that the spirit of the monster continued to haunt the castle, seeking to make its presence known. Some stories claim that the ghostly figure of Thomas, the deformed heir, could be seen wandering the hidden passages of the castle and along the roof parapets and the grounds perpetually bound to the confines of his tragic existence. Various television programs dedicated to paranormal investigations have featured Glamis Castle over the decades. These shows often use specialized equipment and teams of investigators to explore reputedly haunted locations within the castle. Glamis Castle itself is one of the most haunted castles in the world, and it would be simply impossible to cover all ghosts in today's episode. Here, on this channel, we will be covering Glamis Castle in multiple episodes, so be sure to subscribe to the channel for those. At the time of making this video, Glamis Castle is temporarily closed to members of the public and paranormal investigators. However, here are some of the things that used to be available when it was open to the public. Castle Tours Explore the grandeur of the castle with guided tours that take you through its various rooms, including the state dining room, Queen Mother's sitting room, and more. Gardens and Grounds Wander through the beautifully manicured gardens surrounding the castle, featuring its diverse plant life and stunning landscapes. Visit the Italian Garden the walled garden, and the nature trail, each offering a unique experience. Chapel Royal Discover the Chapel Royal, an integral part of the castle's complex, known for its historical significance and architectural beauty. Play area for children Families with children can enjoy the adventure playground offering a range of play equipment and activities for younger visitors. Gift shops and tea rooms. Explore the gift shops within the castle grounds, where you can find souvenirs, Scottish products and unique items. Visit the tea rooms to enjoy a break with refreshments and local treats. Special events and exhibitions. Glamis Castle hosts various events throughout the year, including themed tours, concerts and exhibitions. Check the official details for upcoming events through their website, which we shall link below. Weddings and Events Glamis Castle serves as a picturesque venue for weddings and special events. The castle's stunning backdrop and historical charm make it a popular choice for celebrations. Archery and falconry Depending on the season and availability, visitors may have the opportunity to participate in activities like archery and falconry, providing a hands-on experience with traditional skills. Paranormal tours For those intrigued by the castle's ghostly reputation, Spectral paranormal tours may be available, exploring the haunted legends associated with Glamis Castle. Art Exhibitions Occasionally, 
Glamis Castle hosts art exhibitions featuring works by local and international artists, providing an additional cultural dimension to your visit. Overall, Glamis Castle has a very interesting and mesmerizing past. In the future episodes of Glamis Castle, we will be revealing more of the many ghosts and folklore tales of the castle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mystery Realm. If you are new here, then consider subscribing and leaving a like on today's video. We hope to catch you in our next episode. Until next time.